Here's another million dollar idea behind using large language models in enterprise or business applications. This one's kind of inspired by Greg Brockman, who is the CTO of OpenAI, the guys behind GPT-3. You could actually use any large language model to do this, and I'll talk about some of the engines that I played with, but let's jump in. So back in February 2022, Greg fed GPT-3 with a bunch of munged up text from OCR, Optical Character Recognition, and GPT-3, even though it wasn't trained to do this, found out where to add the spaces and make it into beautiful, readable text. Now, I think he got this idea from DeepMind and they came out with their Ithaca platform, their Ithaca model a little while ago. It's amazing. This is from March, 2022. It's able to restore text, even though it doesn't know the language and certainly it doesn't know what it was trying to say. But in 2022, we're so smart now with our models that it was able to fill in the gaps of ancient inscriptions. So I'm going to talk about citations and styles today. You might have played around with this at university or you might need to do this as part of papers, but I just wanted to show how these large language models can mess around with text even when it doesn't know anything about it. it the black box is so amazing. So there are a lot of different styles you can use for doing references. Three of the big ones are Chicago, where you just write in the full name uh, and then a period, at the, oh, sorry, a comma at the end, or MLA, where you put in the surname, then a comma, then the first and middle name, and then a dot. Or APA, we had to use this through Australia. Surname, comma, first name initial, dot, second name initial, dot. Really strict standards behind putting this in. So here's the application. Grab any paper, grab the title, the names, maybe just one of those, and feed it into GPT-3 and see what it can do. So by way of example, let's use some of the big AI papers from the last few months. Let's grab the original GPT-3 paper, and it looks like that's in Chicago style, just the full name. But sometimes that's really hard to determine where the name starts and where the next name starts after that one ends because you've got middle names sometimes, you've got initials sometimes, you've got crazy characters in there. Let's have a look. This is the GPT-3 paper, I'm gonna put it into the GPT-3 engine using text DaVinci 002. My temperature is at 0.5 and I've asked it to convert to APA style citation with all authors. And you'll see it's grabbing surname, first name and initial and putting it in the perfect format there. Even has a guess as to the year that paper came out puts the title in and the uh, research lab as well. That's pretty much perfect. You check that year, but that's doing some really good stuff. In archive, you can actually export a citation and that citation is in Bibtex format. It's kind of, uh, again, kind of mashed up. A computer might recognize this and you could write a script to do everything I'm doing today, but we're really just testing the limits of this. So let's throw this into GPT-3 again, and it's doing pretty much the same thing. I tested this with Ada and Babich and Curie. I got decent results with Curie, but you can't do this with Ada or Babich. They're just a little bit too small, and I'm using all DaVinci today to show actually how this is done. Let's grab another paper. This is the Google Research Palm paper. It came out here in 2022. It's got names all over the shop. It's got uh, different characters. You've got asterisks through there. I can't even tell where the first names start and the next names begin in a, in a line like this one. And let's ask it the same question here. APA style citation with all authors. And it's having to be pretty clever here in distinguishing what is a first name and what is a last name. And just from glancing at that, it is doing a perfect job. It's guessed the year, but um, that's a pretty good job there. You might think tools like this already exist and you could script this. You could use Python or something like that if you knew the starting style and the end style. The thing is, sometimes you don't know or you're just dumping in info from wherever it comes from. Archive is pretty good with its formatting in uh, Chicago style. Let's see some of the competitors out there that don't actually work. So this is a citationconverter.com. There are lots like this and I'm feeding it in the same palm paper, telling it that it's MLA journal and I want it to go to APA journal style. 
might actually be Chicago here, but it only grabs <laughs> not even the first name. This is the other big one. We use this throughout university here in Australia, citethisforme.com. It costs seven pounds a month, and I'm feeding it here with a paper that has over a hundred authors, but it can only find two of them, even though it's been pushed to archive.org and it should have a standard format for the citation. So this is completely unusable. It hasn't even given us the principal author properly, which is very, very strange. This is what that actual paper looks like. The principal author there, Bomasani, and it's over a hundred authors here from Stanford. Let's copy and paste this and see what we can do if we give this to GPT-3. Same question, convert to APA style format with all authors, please. And look at the lumpy text up there. It's even got the word abstract in there. It's got the university in there, the center name, but GPT-3 is smart enough to pull out the authors in the correct format, add the title of the article, and it will even reference Stanford University there. That's another example of using a Boeing Dreamliner 787 to kind of drive to the shops. It's a real underuse of what this black box large language model can do. But a really fun way of doing something that I used to have to do by hand, you know, copy and paste the name, flip that into an initial, put it in order, grab the, you know, this shouldn't have to be manual anymore. You should be able to feed anything you can think of that has to do with language into GPT-3 and play around with it, particularly the largest engine and get amazing results. There you go, that's my uh, next million dollar idea. I'm sure you could go and compete with Cite This For Me and charge seven pounds per user per month with much better results. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. The Memo is my private mailing list, giving you new stories and practical insights on the latest in artificial intelligence. Did you get that memo? Yeah, I got the memo. Jump into the memo with a monthly or annual subscription to receive priority access to AI papers, videos, and news that matters. Yeah. Didn't you get that memo? Lifearchitect.ai slash memo. I have the memo.